What's up everyone, this is Volgris here, and today I'm going to be doing a motion tracking tutorial for Adobe After Effects. And motion tracking has many uses. You can track things such as text or images within Adobe After Effects to walls or to people or to really anything within the video. You can also track external images or graphics from Photoshop, and you can also use this for image stabilization. The reason I am doing this tutorial is because on Saturday I'm going to be releasing a graphics pack and I feel that in order to get the most out of it, you should definitely have some knowledge of motion tracking. Okay, so let's begin. So first you want to import your clip into Adobe After Effects. If you rendered this in Sony Vegas beforehand, you want to make sure that you disabled resample. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a pretty good clip for motion tracking. This will work in most images, but I found it hard in video games such as Call of Duty because a lot of the same colors are used especially in maps and you know ghillie suits so keep that in mind especially you know when ghillie suits are the same color as the terrain you know the person's playing in so I have a clip right here it may look kinda of familiar and I'm going to be motion tracking text to this person right here now I will be doing another tutorial showing you how you can motion track graphics but that will be a little bit later on so right now what you want to do is you want to create a new layer you want to create an adjustment layer and you want to um, also create a text layer so you can just create a text layer and make it say anything you want so I'm going to make this say tutorial okay you can make this say anything you want and then drag it to right about the same place where you would like it to um, stick to your character now you want to go on your adjustment layer and you want to click on the pen tool or hit G on your keyboard and you want to make really any shape you want like I said, this is only the basics. You can really do anything, but for now, this is how I'm going to demonstrate the concept of motion tracking. So I'm going to do a little arrow, motion track to my player's head, and then if I hold in shift, I will make a perfectly horizontal line, and uh, that's just a little trick that might help you out when you're doing this. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to Effect, Generate, and Stroke. All right. Now uh, you want to click the down arrow on Effects, down arrow on Stroke, and... Uh, for brush size, you want to put that up to about 4. Actually, I'm going to put mine to 3. Okay. So, again, make sure that all these effects and this uh, mask is being applied on the adjustment layer. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to click on your text layer, hold in control, and then click on your adjustment layer, click on layer, and then pre-compose. Just make sure you move all attributes into a new composition and click OK. Okay, now you have one layer that has your text and your little uh, arrow pointing to your character's head. Now what you want to do is you want to create a null object. Okay. Now I will be doing a tutorial on null objects explaining more about them but for now all you need to know is that this is going to help you track to your character. Now you don't necessarily need a null object but they help you out a lot as an editor especially if you want to do more with After Effects and do more with motion tracking. This will also help you out a lot if you're using image stabilization, so keep that in mind and I would definitely recommend that you use a null object. Now what you want to do is you want to go to window and you want to make sure that you see tracker and make sure it's checked off. If it's checked off, yours might appear in a different location, but I have mine set to appear right here. Now you're going to click on your clip that you want to track to and uh, mine's right here, motion track tutorial clip, and you want to click on track motion. Now you should see a box, another box inside of that box, and a little plus sign. Now this is important. Now, if technically, uh, here's how it works. If you click right inside of the innermost box, it will bring up a little magnifying glass, and you basically want to pick a point to uh, track to. So I'm going to go a little bit further in the timeline, and I'm going to track to this person's shirt right here. So just click that and just track to a specific place. I'm going to track right, let's see, right here should be good. And if it's not, we can always change this. And if any keyframes ever mess up, we can do it next manually. Okay, so this plus sign right here is where the program is going to be looking for that color sample. This innermost box is where it's going to search for the color sample. And this outermost box is supposed to be an outline of the character or whatever object you are tracking to. So you can just put this really wherever. And um, if you want, Make sure that there's no jumps or lagginess, otherwise you might have to adjust the size of this box. I'm going to put mine right about this big, and I suggest you do the same, and you can always change this later on. Also, just a tip, 
Um, it's very hard to motion track to things such as emblems or to um, level signs or even your gamer tag. And also I'd recommend, especially like you obviously pick a color that's not in the map or at least not within this little box because that will really mess it up, especially like ghillie suits like I said. Just keep that in mind. Um, if I was picking a lighter color such as this right here, this um, white, it could get confused between you know, parts of the sky and things of that nature. So keep that in mind. Okay, now what I'm going to do is under Analyze, I'm going to hit Play. And now it is going to analyze and motion track that actual box to the player itself. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's not actually motion tracked exactly on, and that's because of the size of the box. You can change that, but for this tutorial, I just felt it was best to make the box bigger. And you see right here, it kind of messed up. And that's all right. I'm going to show you guys how you can fix that. So, uh, before you do anything else, you want to click on the down arrow on motion tracking. Uh, down arrow on motion trackers and down arrow on tracker 1 and down arrow on tracker point 1 so now you have all these right here and you want to find the exact place where it messes up so that would be I'm gonna say right here okay you want to then highlight all the keyframes before that specific point and you want to keyframe a few of them manually so just you can zoom in if you want like this and right here is where I'm going to begin manual keyframing. Now you only have to do this once or twice unless there's a specific color that um, obviously that I was looking for. I'm also going to make these trackers smaller and I'm going to just try this again and see how it works. So I'm going to track to this point right here which is the point I originally meant to track to and I'm going to hit play. So as you see right here it is tracking to the person again and if that ever happens, you know, you can just do that. It takes maybe a second or two, and um, it definitely fixes the clip. So, once you're done, or if you want to stop, you can hit, you know, stop right here. As you see, it messed up again. Uh, I would generally go back and fix that, but for now, I really don't need to. I have enough motion tracker points already there. Now, what you want to do is you want to click on Apply, and you want to make sure that you have X and Y selected. That way, it's going to track to both the X and Y coordinates, and you click OK. Now, if you click on the down arrow under Null 1, or whatever you decide to name your Null object, you should see keyframes under all the positions, and you should notice that this little box right there is following your character. Now, this box will not appear in the final render, but it is definitely useful as an editor to have that there, especially as a point of reference. Now, I only started motion tracking at this point right here, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that your pre-comp, or whatever text you want to be shown and motion track to the character, you want to make sure that that is in the correct position right where the motion tracking starts. So I'm going to put it right above his head. Okay, now for this tutorial it's also good to keep in mind that generally as you're moving farther away from the camera, tutorial is also going to shrink in size, that way it's going to simulate perspective. We're not going to be doing that right now, this is just basics, but I will show that later on. Now beside pre-comp 1, we're going to click parent and we're going to change the parent to be null 1. That way, wherever the null object goes, tutorial is also going to go. Okay, now this is important. Because we decide to motion track to his chest as opposed to his head, where tutorial is aiming to, uh, there is going to be some problems with um, perspective. Now, as you notice, right here, it's motion tracked to his head perfectly. But as you get farther away, tutorial also gets farther away from his head too. And that's not necessarily a big issue, but that's due to the fact that um, we are not simulating perspective enough. Now, you can do that simply, and this is another reason why we decided to use the null object as opposed to the actual text object or the pre-comp. Now uh, we are just going to select the image where it begins the motion track, uh, click down arrow on pre-comp, you're going to then click on position, keyframe position that is, and go to the last keyframe where it's motion tracked. Right here it kind of messes up, so don't worry about it, I'm just not going to even worry about that right now. And I'm going to move tutorial down a little bit, that way here. I'm only going to move the Y coordinates. So now we are perfectly aligned with his head. And if you would like to mess with the scale, you can just by simply um, keyframing scale. Okay, and um, right here, let me see how I would do this. Um, it's probably going to give us a problem if I do this. Let me try it. Um, you can just simply make the scale smaller and then just put it up against his head again. So now we have something that looks like this. Okay, now as you run away, you're going to notice that his head gets smaller, tutorial gets smaller, and everything looks normal. Well, besides the fact that he has an arrow coming up from his head, that's not normal. But besides that, it's pretty easy, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. I will greatly appreciate that. And also, subscribe if you are not already. And thanks for watching. I hope you liked it, and I hope you learned something new today. 
All right, thanks.